known as Modern on the Internet. And we are so happy that you are here with us today. Um, it's going to be a really relaxing class. I actually have my spa music turned on. So um, I hope that you have a drink with you, all the supplies ready. I will be using some Faber Castell gelatos today. And I'll be going over some, some really fun ways to use this gelatos while we're also doing the background. Um, the project today, you can use it for so many things. You can create your own cards, like even just with your regular journaling, I think it will be really helpful to just kind of really easy, relaxing, and, and sometimes not overwhelming, super crazy detail. This is loose watercoloring. So kind of like losing up a little bit and we're going to have lots of fun. I'm going to head over to the overhead camera and we'll get this class started, shall we? Okay. Here we go. All right. Okay. So like what I said, we will be using some Faber Castell gelatos. I love these. Um, these are honestly becoming my favorite supplies to use. Um, and I am not gonna lie to you, when I first started using this, I was really overwhelmed as well because I'm like, I really don't know what's the best way how to use the gelato. And um, until I just kind of played around with it, played around with it and figured out and also did my own research of kind of watching other artists, how they use it. Um, I pulled out some colors, although, however, I think in the list that I provided, I did have a color over there, but right now I have some metallics, gold champagne. I have um, red sherry, all right. Um, I do have the, the black licorice. I have ice curant. I have ice coffee and some Odyssey. I also have here on the side, just in case I might wanna use some of it, ice chai. Gelatos are offered individually. You can get this individually. Um, also, they are offered in many different sets. They come with, they come in brights. They have iridescent um, and also metallic. I love the metallics. It's just, I don't know. I, I think it's my favorite. Might be biased. I have here also the banana, just in case. I have some yellows, oranges, reds, and some browns in here. Okay, so when I said earlier that gelatos are can be used many different ways because these are creamy pigment sticks that you can use directly into the page, like just like that, kind of like a crayon. So it's kind of like a lipstick. So <laughs> this is the mechanism, like the same lip gloss or something like that. So you can use it directly into your page to color in your background. You can smudge it with your finger. You can actually use your finger to kind of pick up your pigments over here. I'll use my pointer finger. <laughs> I find it kind of fun using that middle finger over there. And another way is that you can pick up water, just kind of dip your finger in the water and just activate those pigments like that. So when you're doing that, then you can color in and smudge it and color and all that. Because this is water soluble, I highly suggest really using a watercolor pad, you know, a paper that is really meant for water medium. So it's always good to have that. Another fun way to use it is like this one where you apply it directly. You can use a water brush to pick up and move around the pigments. Just like that. Sometimes it's not my favorite because it always leaves a mark, especially if your page is not prepped with some gesso. So just to give you a heads up. But another fun way is to kind of just apply it directly, lightly though, so we don't leave a whole lot of mark. And then I just have a regular baby wipes in here and I would wrap it around my pointer finger, whichever finger you are most comfortable in using. I like my pointer, I feel like I have most control. And so I would just smudge it. Hey, Lay, I just want to let everyone know, uh, if you could please uh, turn your mute on, mm -hmm. we hear someone's TV. There we go. Thank you. See that? See how blended that is? And you don't leave a mark as well. So I really love using this um, baby wipes like that. Okay, so we have different um, sample backgrounds that I created for this class, but I want to start with the very simple, very basic. Okay, I have here... I'm pretty sure that you guys have some washi tapes in hand. 
there at home laying around, you know, just a plain, simple washi. This is a fun trick that I really love doing. This is not part of the picture that we created for the class, but you're going to see. We're going to create some soft, romantic, like geometric background. So you just kind of create your own, all of these um, spaces that we have the washi tape, that's going to be a negative space. So everywhere that you're going to lay down that washi tape, that is not going to be colored. Okay, so I like it when it's overlapping. If you don't have a washi tape in there, it's okay. You can just kind of watch along for, for now. Um, I have a different size. I think this is a five millimeter, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not mistaken. This one is a 10. Or that, yep, and I think this is a 10. I'm just kind of creating my own things in here. And I also picked very fall colors in here, if you notice. <laughs> it's super pretty. Okay. Just, okay, don't overthink it. Don't be like me as I'm overthinking it right now. I'm just going to lay it down. I really want that just plain look. Uh, I grabbed the same size. So I'm going to go back to the small size here. Just this one to meet over here. And then I want one to uh, meet there. It'll look funky later, we'll find out. Okay, so we have all that. I'm going to pick the yellow, the Odyssey here, kind of like a green gold in here. I love this color. Okay, then we'll pick um, this beautiful red sherry, and then I'll have the iced chai. Is that how you pronounce it, chai? And I will just directly apply it into my page like this. I'm just creating those corners here. I want this to be all the dark colors. Then I want it to kind of like blend with all the um, bright ones that we have. Here I'll do the opposite. So kind of like just really being random about it. So I'll put one here. Put the other one here. When you're doing this, um, if you don't, if you didn't prep your page, make sure to just kind of go and do it lightly, as slightly as you can. And then I'm going to get over to the Odyssey color and I'm going to go do that, apply it. It doesn't matter the direction because everything will be smudged and blended later. So I'm not being super careful with how I apply it, but just kind of being lightly about it, but not worrying about the which way I'm going, up and down, vertical or horizontal. And then lastly, I'm going to use the red cherry. Just a little bit of this one because these are really um, very saturated. Um, but of course, like with any uh, water soluble medium, the more water you use, of course, you're diluting that pigment in there. So if you want more saturation, then the less water you're going to use, like watercolors, if you want more colors and more pigments, that's what you're going to use. But if you want it kind of like very washed look, then you can use as much water as you like. Okay, now with this technique, I'm going to be using the baby wipes technique, okay? And then I will start with the red sherry and I'll go on and just kind of like blend it with the yellows this way. Then I'll start here again with the cherry. So red to the yellows to the gold, like champagne gold. Let's see, I'm gonna go head over and just kind of fill this one up because I didn't smudge it enough. Repeat the same process. Kind of zoom in so you guys can really see how blended it is. Look at that. I'll do the same process here. And then be careful when also when you're doing your smudge, smudging, because you don't want to lift up the colors too much. Um, you just want to make sure that you kind of feel it too when you're doing the smudging. If you have a water brush in there, you can use the water brush and kind of blend all those colors together if you don't have a baby wipes in there. So you kind of just use your water brush and just blend all these colors in. To repeat the same process. Mm. 
This will be fun if you're like creating a card or like bookmarks. So easy to do too. And you're like, so in the moment when you're doing it, I know I am, I always do this. I'm like, Ugh. and then if you feel like it's not blending anymore, if you kind of move around it where there's, it's still wet because that part that we've been using, it's the moisture was gone because we've been using it for a while. So kind of just move it around to get more, um, the area that has more moisture. Oh. All right. And the good thing about uh, the lovely thing actually about the gelatos is that once this dry and you've used water and moisture to kind of blend everything, once this dry, this is going to be waterproof. So if you want more colors on top of this, the first layer that you created, that's not moving. So that's going to be sitting in there and waiting for you to add more layers if you'd like. Now this is the time for reveal, let us do it. It's just super fun. So you can create it with kind of like doing just stripes or if you have um, removable stickers and if you have a, um, what do you call those punchers, circle punchers, round punchers, then you can create your own dots in there. Isn't that, would that be fun to do? Just play around with the technique and all that. Ooh, now I wish, looking at this, I wish I didn't use the much bigger one. I wish I would just stuck with the five millimeter, but it's okay. It just makes it super interesting. Look how fun that is. It's super simple, super easy. That's our first background that we created. Now we can create the soft ombre look that we have in there. This time we're gonna use, um, we're going to, have if you have any artist palette there with you i have this one i think this came with a set i think the intro to watercolors and i just love using it with the gelatos so we are going to be using the light yellow if you have a light yellow in there um the medium medium kind of like golden yellow that we have the odyssey color and then we have the red sherry no we start with the the kind of like the blood orange here and then the red sherry and then we'll use the ice chai again. I love that color. Okay, so for this, we're going to be use it, using this as a watercolor. So I'm gonna apply this in my palette here. Okay, um, another trick, if you have like a packaging of some old stickers, you know how the acetate film, you can definitely use those acetate film and apply your gelatos in that and use that as your palette, that will work have this. So I'm just kind of smudging it in this palette. This is like a silicone. Um, so if you have a silicone mat, that's going to work too. But remember, once this dry, it might leave some mark because they become waterproof after. So this way. And then I might just use the iced coffee just if I need a little bit dark in here. Okay. Now for this one, I am going to be using a water brush. Um, this is from Faber-Castell. This is their premium water brush. I'm just kind of like dip it at first, kind of wet and activate those pigments of the gelatos, just like that. And then clean my brush, activate this color. It's definitely lighter. So I'll use this first, clean my brush again. I'll do this blood orange, another bright sherry. Repeat the same process, this one, and then the other one. Now, this technique is the wet on wet technique. Because just because I don't want to leave a mark and I want it to kind of like go with flow with everything. If you have your watercolor pad there with you, um, I want you to get a brush, whatever brush you're using, and just apply water. Just apply water. Make sure your brush is really clean or you will contaminate the page and add some colors in there. I must say I'm not the best at it. <laughs> My brushes, sometimes I thought I cleaned them well, but you know, sometimes it's not the cleanest. But just as long as you apply water in there 
And then while it's still wet, we're gonna start with our colors. So I'm gonna start with this light yellow that I have, and I'm just gonna really go in there and I feel like I'm gonna need more. So I'm just gonna do, 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 do. Oop, wrong color lay. This white swatches is really important. Now that it's actually wet, because the page, this palette is still a little bit wet, so I can do this. Just play around, don't worry about it. Because this is creamy, so if you kind of like activate those pigments in there, and then use your brush pen to kind of make it flow like that. Pick up other colors over there, as long as we focus on the light colors in first. Or if you want the dark colors in first, we'll just go have a gradient look in this, but very washed. Because if we apply this directly into a dry page, this is not going to be the same result. We're not getting the same result. And I feel like this is already drying up. I'm just going to apply water in there again, just to make sure everything's going to be still wet when we apply the other colors. So let those colors look just blend in because it is the wet on wet technique. We have this beautiful washed watercolor background. So I'm just looking there. I'm not, I'm going very light with my brush here. So very light. I'm just kind of dabbing and then swooshing those colors. Swooshing a word? I think so. Just doing that. Ah, I love it. I'm gonna go with a bright cherry here. Again, if you feel like you want more colors, you need more colors in here, kind of wet your tip of your gelatos a little bit and just apply it there, here. But very lightly because you don't want those harsh. Look at that, I left a mark because I have a ha heavy hand naturally. So it's like, it's always scary for me to do that technique. But if you're light-handed, oh, I think you love that technique. There, I'm gonna go with this. Ooh, the colors are blended. So we'll have dark in here. So I think, see my colors? Yeah, the thing that you can do when um, your paper buckle, and it's, it's normal because you're putting in so much water in there, I think you really can't help that. What helps me is sometimes I put washi tape, border it around, and that's what really helps. Um, but then you can also, once it's all dried up, you can just, you know, put use some heavy, heavy books and just sit on top of your artwork. That always helps out. Just adding more colors in here. I feel like it's a super wet. There. And while it's still wet, you can take those pigments and just kind of move them, move them around to avoid those harsh lines. This is fun. Can you imagine a beautiful lettering on top of this once it's dry? I love it. I'm going to use the iced coffee, kind of like wet it a little bit. Like that. Or I can use just my finger, now that it's wet, and just pick up those pigments like that. And just kind of like swoosh it. Look. Oh, lovely. And I think this is really, I fell in love with this when I wanted to try to mix media. And I then realized how, how much you can do with this little stick. I mean, I use it on a canvas. We did a project and we did it on a canvas. Um, I have a class, upcoming class, where I color the wooden pumpkin with the gelato. So make sure to sign up for that because that's going to be really fun. Um, and I just keep trying it on many different surfaces because it's like, ah, oh, how can I push this <laughs> little thing? Okay, because I am impatient, I have here my heat tool. I love this thing because it's not super loud. Just be careful when you're doing the heat tool because it might buckle up as well on you. So I'm just kind of like not super close. I don't want to um, make it warp so much. And just being far away from your surface helps a little bit, but you, you can't help it because it's wet and it's drying up. So I think it's um, inevitable that it's going to warp. And all right, I'm just drying up. 
oh, I love this one. I want to put a beautiful lettering piece on this. Look at that. And while we have the colors over here in our palette, I created kind of like a very pretty just rainbows. You know, when we think about rainbows, we think about summer. Um, but that's not always true. Rainy season, you know, you have rainbows after. And if you're using just a same palette as the, you know, the fall palette that we created, I think it's going to be pretty too. And a plus, easy. Rainbows are easy and looks very aesthetically pleasing as well. So if you want that minimal look and you want to have some patterns, create some patterns without creating it too busy, I think like very simple rainbow will look really nice. Okay, I think my page is dry. Now I just want to show you how beautiful some of the metallics are. Look at this. I don't think you can see, but the metallics are like shimmering, shining. The camera is not picking it up well, but it is gorgeous. So gorgeous. Ah, love that. How did yours turn out? The heat tool I'm using is quiet. Yes, Deb, it is really quiet. And that's why I am in love with this because I have my old one and it's like super loud. Um, this one is really good. This one's from Ranger. You can find this on Michael's as well. And I just absolutely love this thing. Yeah. Okay. So we'll head over and do our rainbow that I'm talking about because it's simple. I mean, we can all do that kind of like the curving half circle, kind of like letter C. Um, I'll use the blood orange. I really love that deep orange that I get from this one. All right. And then I'll use the iced orange. So when I'm working with a water medium, um, some watercolors, they're not waterproof like the gelatos, uh, but I always like to start with my lightest color, okay? So rainbow, the only thing that I think I struggle with the rainbow sometimes is that I make my ray either too big or too small. So I think just be mindful with how big your first ray you want to be because that will be the width of your rainbow. So whether you want to start with the, the most inner part of the ray, I always like to do three. Um, but because this is not a real rainbow, it's kind of like we're creating that pattern, minimal pattern of rainbow. So I'm just going to do it in threes. Um, if you want to start with the very smallest, that's always helpful. Or if you want to be precise with how wide your image is going to be, then start with the outer ray first. I think I'm going to start with the smallest, then I can just going to go with it. And this time, I'm not going to make it just straight or just vertical. I'm going to kind of like play around with it, create my own pattern paper in this. This is an A5 size. So you can use, if you're using like a four by six, so just kind of like overlap somewhere in the corner, you know, make it just like that. Okay, so I'm going to start in here and I'm going to start with the smallest or the inner ray. Okay, well, let's go wet. I'm going to kind of like randomly go into the other side like this, like that. Go over. This. And when you're doing this, Sometimes I know it's very restricting. If you have like, if you're using a nine by 12, it's big, but don't make your hands feel like you have to move it around. Move your paper around because that's the easiest thing for me. Like I don't have to battle um, which, what doesn't feel natural. So move your paper around so it will be easier for you. Now go over here. And here's a technique that I must admit I don't, a tip, I should say, that I am not the very best at as well. If you're a lefty, let's say, um, because this is water and you can smudge it easily, I really suggest starting with the top first and it kind of like go down. And if you're a lefty, you know that you're going to smudge it right here, right? So from the right to the left, or if you're a righty, then from left to the right. So kind of just be mindful of how you want where you want to start it and how you want to finish your image. Look, I made it too big, darn it. So I should start 
all the time with the top so that it will be dry and I don't have to worry about smudging all these little things over here. Oops, my bad. Okay, so I'm just doing the inner for now. And then we're gonna do the middle and the last ray. Some part you wanna kind of like peeking like this. It just makes it look like um, a really pretty pattern paper. So sometimes it's like the end, just like that. All right, and then washer brush. And then we're gonna do the orange first. This case, this is the blood orange. Okay, now I'll start with the top first. I'll be a good girl. Remember, once this gelato is dry, you don't have to worry about that because that's waterproof. I love it. I know I keep repeating myself, but I really love that fact. <laughs> but if you want your colors blended, make sure to blend everything while both are still wet. So always remember, Because once they're dry, they are going to stay in there. So this one, it's just look how random my sizes are. Some are like super narrow, um, some are like wider. And I think that just gives it um, a visual effect, almost like a happy mess. I don't like to call it a happy mess. Can you do it here? Some are much bigger than the others. Oops. Remember when you're working with a water medium, what, what you have to really um, think about is how much water you're picking up because I think that's something that takes practice and it takes a lot of um, working with this type of medium because that's that, that was one of my struggles. Sometimes it's like not enough water or sometimes it's too much water, um, but just kind of play around with it. Like what we're doing right now, we're just really playing in here. So this one is super tiny. Okay. Okay, move it here. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you have too much water, remember it's going to bleed and start moving into the other side, but I'm okay with that. I really like embracing the mess. Ooh. Okay, I'll pick up some of the kind of like reddish color in here, super pretty. And this is part of the metallic line, which I really love. Doing this and I'll start again from the top. that. I'll turn up my music so you guys can hear a little bit of that. <laughs> this one over here. Okay. I think this will take you a while if you have a large <laughs> size or canvas that you're working on. So just kind of be patient about them. This is also just kind of nice to do this in your journal. If you have um, a journal or a sketchbook you're working on and you need a simple project to kind of just do something creative, this is really fun way, especially watercolors. I really love working with watercolors because it really puts me into the, into the moment when the colors are blending or I see those colors moving around the pigments. It just gives me this bliss. Who else love working with watercolors in here? Hey, Lay, there's a question hey. they're asking, what kind of journal are you using? Yeah, what's, what's that, I'm sorry? What type of journal are you using? Oh, the type of journal I'm using right now at this point is from Archer and Olive. Um, I really love it because it's all watercolor pages, but it's also dot grid. So it's not plain. And I love sometimes having, it's a, it's a love and hate relationship. Well, it really depends on what I'm, 
um, using it for, but I enjoy the dot grid because it kind of just helps me visually. <laughs> but then I also love using Strathmore um, watercolor like this. So I love using journals. I love it when it's in a journal because I always say this, if I'm using just loose watercolor pages, I mean, I gotta, I gotta be honest, I lose these pages. Sometimes I think they're, you know, um, they were trash and just kind of like, so I just throw them away. But if I have it in a journal, I have something to look back on someday and say, oh, wow, look at how I am I'm improving in my lettering or whatever it is that you're working on. Um, but it really helps a lot. And plus it's memories, you know, so I kind of think you should use a journal and kind of keep it. So you have this reference. So this is from Archer and Olive, and I really love it. There's another question out there asking, what type of brush are you using and does it have water on it? Oh, the one that didn't have water on, um, this one is from Royal and Lang Nickel. So this is a number four brush. Love that. Okay, so this one, I know that you still have like empty pages in here. You can just easily put in dots, hearts, you know, it depends on what's, what's your favorite shape or what's the easiest. Sometimes it's like, what's the easiest for me to do? Okay, the easiest would be dots. And, and it's really pleasing also and very easy to use. You can just, or if you like to do, you know, different medias, you can pick up per se, you can use your pit artist and just kind of like add dots in there. This is the medium flesh 131. And look how beautiful it is together with this palette. Or you can use your gold as well, the Pit Artist. These are gonna do really lovely. But if you don't have it, just create some dots using your gelatos or your watercolors in there. Since I have all these in front of me, I might as well use them. And I'm just adding small, tiny dots. And we're just filling in those large areas that we didn't have our rainbows in. This is so pretty. Oops, it was still wet, so I made a little bit of mess. That's what I was kind of talking about. Embrace the mess. And then also really helpful is that if you're gonna keep a journal, make sure to kind of not kind of, but make sure to really date it because that's when you're going to know, oh, this is from, you know, 2015 or 2021. So that next year, we're going to look back in our journal with all our classes that we created and you're going to see, wow, look at this. Look how much I've, I've improved on. Okay, so next what we're going to do is lose watercoloring, but let's do the stripe first because I really love that look and it's kind of like overlapping and it looks hard, but it's really not hard. It's super easy. I'm gonna stick with three colors in here. Um, I think I'm gonna use the color banana. And I have another color in here that I wanna use. It's the iced rose. So this is from the metallic set again. And I'm going to use the blood orange as well. So I just kind of clean my palette because I don't wanna mix a lot of colors, but I know I'll be using the same similar, but some are blended and blended together and I don't want to mix the colors too much. I'm just using my baby wipes and just cleaning my palette like this. So we can start a brand new one. All right. So use the color banana, kind of dip it in the water just a little bit. Like that. Okay. And also by using this instead of plain watercolor, um, what really helps me and what I love about this personally is that I can control how much pigments I really want in there and how much water I will use. Um, because like what I said in the beginning, those are part of my struggles is that sometimes I have too much water or sometimes I have less um, colors that I'm picking up. So this way, I feel like I am more in control, if that makes any sense. Ooh, this is a really, it's kind of like a rose gold color. It's so lovely, so lovely. I feel like we're gonna need more. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the next page over here. 
switch it around. For the stripes, we're going to go with the lightest first. With the lightest, we're going to create like thick, bold strokes underneath. Okay, so I'm just going to use this. I use my water brush and slanted, not straight top. Use the body of your brush, no matter what brush are you using, and just kind of smudge that. Yeah. And if you feel like your line is too thin, go back in there, pick up more colors and go back and then make that line thicker, okay? Sometimes I feel like I need more water and then have your color on the side. If you feel like you need more color, just do it like that. And then I'm gonna go spaces. And I don't, I feel like maybe this is half an inch thick, my strokes. Here we go. Oh, okay. This water brush, this has water in it. This is the premium water brush from Faber Castell. I really love it because the water flow is consistent. I um, I share this most of the time. Um, I have enough water flowing to keep the brush soft and moist and wet, um, but not so much water is moving. Um, that it's going to mess up my artwork because some of the water brush that I've tried, sometimes it spills out water too fast or sometimes not enough. And this one is just very consistent. And if, if I feel like I need more water, all I got to do is just dip it in my, in my bowl and just kind of just like that. But most of the time, I really like my brush wet. So that's why I do that. Okay, I'm just going to continue on. I hope I answered that question. Okay, so there we have it. I use this for many, many things for coloring, plain coloring. I use it for my um, lettering. I, I love it. And you're going to see it, how we're going to use this to create our beautiful loose florals later also. So I'm just going ahead and creating those tropes. I'm going to go move on, move a little quicker this time because I don't want to uh, run out of time because I really want to go and do our loose water florals as well. Because that's, that's gorgeous and you can practice your florals with me. Um, I might, I might have, to, I have to say that florals are not my strengths. I really love the kawaii style of drawing, but like with every artist, you should always step out of your comfort zone as well and try new things. And I don't think um, there's anything wrong with that. I'm just gonna clean the brush, have my baby wipes and kind of like dab it, make sure I don't have all those colors. And then I'll just hold the gelatos on my left hand just in case I need more. I have it handy and ready. Okay, so this time we did, um, so, this time we're gonna do oops, our vertical lines. We did the horizontal thicker strokes. This time we're gonna go easy and make some vertical, but we're gonna make it where everything is going to be thin, but close together as well. So with this one, so I'm gonna show you just a little bit. Be careful because you might smudge it if it's still wet. So kind of do this, I do this way use the tip of my brush. And if this is, you cannot make this perfect unless you are super woman, then good, good for you. <laughs> I could never make my line straight. All right, <laughs> just do that. So much thinner line this time, and I'm gonna go much closer. I'm just using the tip of my brush and just creating those lines. Not straight, wavy lines. <laughs> Now this time I will have much bigger space between that line that we created, but we're gonna repeat the same process, two thinner strokes going down. I feel like I need more colors, so just do this with my gelato. Okay, and then do this one. Okay. 
Hey, Leigh, I'm so sorry to ask you the question again, but could oh, you yeah. tell us the name of the journal you're using? Archer and Olive. Thank you. You're very welcome. Let's do this again. I feel like it's becoming more wavy than straight. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you're doing things, you're like, you're getting better at it. This time it, does, it looks more crooked than the first one I did. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go over here on the side. Oops. Okay. And did you see that I wasn't trying and making it just one long stroke because it's it's not easy, but you can, of course. So I kind of like stop when I feel like I don't have enough pigments or colors anymore. Let's try and do this. All right. And then space again there. Ooh. Like this. Turn around. like that. Okay, so the in between the yellows, we are going to use the iced rose. I feel like it's not going to give it enough contrast, the iced rose that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and use the deeper or the deeper red that I have, but it's metallic as well. So I just blended it with the um, iced rose that I have in there. Just going to let my brush pick up those pigments. And you can also pick it up straight directly from the gelato. So you don't have to have a palette. You can just pick it up with your brush. And this time, so if we did the thin stroke, this one we're gonna create like a middle, just enough for that spacing. I'm gonna start on the left, just so we look random and I have more pigments over there on that other side. As you can see, many different ways to use the gelatos. Super fun. You could be making all these um, patterns by just applying them directly also. I mean, you don't have to mess with the water brush, just apply the gelatos directly. And that's also a different look, but I just really love that. Now it's up to you if you wanna add just a little bit more lines in here with the same color or maybe with the yellow to kind of have that um, visual um, interest in there. But to me, I think I'm gonna stay right here. And if you have like, a, like what I said, if you have different type of punchers, you can get a round puncher and just make the round, create some bookmarks and all that tags. So this is fun. Okay, now for the florals, I have to say this is really fun. Okay, we have just enough time to finish this project. And I'm going to start with the blood rose because I really love this color. I'm just gonna apply it here. Now we're gonna make this an easy loose watercolor florals, okay? This is not those masterpieces that we see. Although we can if we really put in enough time and effort. Okay, I have the red cherry. So the blood orange and red cherry. So to create those thicker strokes, what did we do? What did you do with your brush? What you did was applied pressure, right? You kind of applied pressure in there while you're doing your thicker strokes. When you were, do when you were doing your thinner strokes, you were very light, correct? So as you can see, you can create many different type of strokes just using one pen. We created a thinner and we created that much thicker just by applying different pressure while we are using our brush. And that's how we're gonna do what we're going to do with this florals. 
So first, we're going to start with our base. And with the base, you want to start with the, that's correct, lightest color that we have. So I'm going to use two colors in here. I'm going to use the blood orange first. And really, this one, don't overthink it. You want to create an imperfect circle. And your imperfect circle is going to be the size of your rows. Right, that's the base. And I'll repeat the same process over here. So I'll have it on the other side, just creating that. All right. Over here, and I'm going to put it over here on the side, kind of like a, a bouquet. So making my floral arrangements. So the way you would do this, visually visualize how you want your bouquet to be. I wanted to kind of like have, make it a border like this. So I have all my three made flowers over here. I'm just kind of make this one a little wider. We'll just wait for it just to dry a little bit. Okay, and while it's drying, if I have my handy dandy here, Like that. Oh, it's so pretty. It's like this perfect coral. And you can make it the deep orange if you want by using less um, water, of course. And I think that's dry. Okay, so now this one is a little tricky and it needs, it really takes a little bit of practice, but it's not hard as long as you really um, put in effort in this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, let me grab just a regular piece of paper here. Let's go on the other side, just so I can show you real quick. So we're gonna create C, letter C, tiny C, much wider C, much bigger one, medium size, but just letter C. So a C this way. And then this time apply a little bit pressure and then use the body of your brush and just kind of Swish it on the side this way, right? Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of water because I want a more washed look. I'm just dab it here in my palette. Pick it up from here. You can look how much of that body of that brush I'm using and just kind of swoosh it around, right? So these are like the petals. Depend we're creating the sizes of the petals that we have. And you're like that. And you need to move it. When you didn't do um, the, the perfect stroke of petal, you can just use the tip and just move it around. Just like that. So use the tip and the base or the body of your brush. And you can just go back in there and just add a little bit of lines here and there. All right. So I'll wait for that to dry real quick because I want to move over to the next one. Practice it in a Separate page. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I used too much water in this one. It's taking a little bit to dry. Just get my baby wipes and just smudge a little bit of that. Okay. All good. All right. So this, <laughs> look, we have a smudge. I'm just gonna dab it and make sure I have the pigments ready. All right, so let's start with the inside of our floral. Like what we did, we created a small C. Put more of that pigment. Okay. I'm gonna create the small letter C in here. I like a smile too. And then from that, from the center of my C, I can go in and just swoosh and then the opposite. Straight down. This time, much bigger one. And then you can just move and use the body, kind of like move those colors around. Right? Pick it up. Oh, 
them to over here until you've covered the whole base. And you might want to have like an overlapping. You go around your base and that's okay. What helps is that when you have more water, I'm not picking up pigments, just water, and just kind of move this around. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna go on to the next side. Repeat the same process, letter C. Slowly. It's all about the control you have in your brush too. So just take it, take your time and just go slow. Be mindful of the pressure you're using to apply when applying when you're creating the petals. Remember for the thick, you have to apply pressure and use the base or the body of your brush. And it'll be hard to do when you don't have enough water in there. So make sure that your brush is really wet. And I'm just coming back. I'm just adding a little bit tiny stick my petals in there. Oh, look how gorgeous that is. Just adding a little bit more gelatos in there. Bring that up. Repeating the same process. If you want to make it more random, maybe this one just have more like loose petals where you can't really see. So just smudge it around like that. Don't be shy. There you go. I'm gonna get with that. Isn't that lovely? And I'm gonna use the Odyssey in here. Just kind of pick up a little bit of water. Right over here. I'm gonna use this for my leaves. And for the leaves, same thing that we did with the petals and the strokes. There's a reason why we practice with the strokes first because I really wanted you to get yourself familiar with your brush. Okay, so for the, for the leaves, it's the same thing. This time, think lightly and use just the tip of your brush. And we're just gonna create this one, the body of the leaves, All right? Repeat the same process, this one from here to here. And I'll do this one today. And do that right over there. So for the leaves, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the tip and apply pressure like this, and then go light again. So light, pressure, and then light again. Okay, let's repeat that. Light, apply pressure, and then go really light again. There, and I'm just gonna fill that in. Okay, repeat the same process over here. Look in the middle first, right? Light, pressure, and then light again. Light, pressure, and then go light again, like that. There. And if you wanna add just more pointier, just go really light and just use the tip of your brush. Repeat the same process and just do that. Some leaves are imperfect, so you can just have this different look, random, more random more loose. Some are facing there, some are facing over here on the other side. All right, we would love to see what you created with us today. Please don't forget to tag us in social media, make it with Michael's. Um, Michael Stores, Faber Castell USA. I am also on social media. My name is at Mommy Lay. I would love to see what you created today. It's been super, super duper fun. After you create your leaves, you can add small details in there. 
um, I love using mixed media. Um, so sometimes I would go in here and just use markers, um, most of the time with watercolors though. To add details, I love using colored pencils. So I would go in and use my colored pencils just to kind of add the veins um, of my leaves. And that always helps and much easier to control too because you're not dealing with um, the thin and the thick strokes or the light and heavy pressure. But if you're having fun with the watercolor, just go ahead and pick up a different darker shade and kind of just add um, the veins of that. And I will do that by just using the tip and then just pick up a little bit so I don't waste so much. So I'll just go over here where it's a little dry and I'm just gonna add just the veins in the middle, just like that. And you can repeat the same process with your rose. If you feel like you're wanting more details in there, um, just add more shade of that deeper red that we used. That's the fun part about the gelatos is that you can layer it and add more colors um, if you want more saturation. Because remember, that first layer, once dry, we, we used water to blend it. And when that dries, that is waterproof and those are not going to move. So you can just keep adding your layers in there and add more colors. Oh, I had so much fun. But that's it. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you had fun with this class. Um, before I say goodbye, I would like to invite everybody again. I hope you will join me again next week. We have another fun class with Michaels and Faber-Castell as usual. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you, be well, please stay creative and stay happy until our next class. See you again. Bye everybody.